a lot of people had to sort of change the way they work. It's actually made for a much tighter team, a sort of art and design sort of being as one, opposed to you know, design going away and doing their thing, art going away and doing their thing, and then sort of clashing in the middle. It's a real organic process. I don't think you can really sit down and go, oh yeah, we're going to do this, we'll do that, and we'll do that, because it's not just about sites, it's combining those two. You hear a lot of developers now talk about an iterative design process, which just means you come up with an idea, uh, you try and work it up a little bit, maybe you implement it, then you see it on screen and then you look at it and go, this bit works, this bit doesn't, let's do more of this, the stuff that does work. We want to come up with environments that would offer up the best opportunities for construction. We chose our environments so that they could support a lot of great power play moments. Sometimes it's the big set piece moments where you think, these, these are going to be the great things that people remember. We've got to make sure that we fit stuff around them. In the airport track, we've got the cargo plane that crash lands and we've got radar dishes and control towers. There's some real you know, iconic moments there that when people see them, they go, we're talking about it. And that's exactly the kind of thing we want to do. And also at the same time, trying to think about what will make good racing tracks because we've also got to have that element nailed as well. Because we're spending so much budget on the effects, We've got a couple of really, really cool techniques that we're using. Um, a lot of games tend to bake all their lighting into the textures for the smoke and things like that. Uh, but we've actually, all our particles are actually being dynamically lit. In addition to that, we've got volumetric smoke in the game. The player's car and their AI cars can actually move out of the way, which is a really, really cool looking effect. But it's also really good for gameplay perspective because you can fill a whole warehouse or tunnel with smoke. The player can't see where they're going, but if the AI cars are in front of them, they can pass it out of the way and suddenly you've got a whole new dynamic going on. The AI in the game needs to be more sophisticated than uh, usual AI systems. There's a lot of technology in there to try and make them behave realistically under these conditions, but also don't want them to race perfectly. So they do sometimes make mistakes, they do sometimes clump up and group together, and they do sometimes just go flat out for the fastest lap. We wanted to make our cars look contemporary. We didn't want them to look too outrageous. If you did see them on the street, you might turn your head and go, wow, that's it, that's a, an amazing looking car. We thought, well, with the environment blowing up left, right and centre, and really we wanted to have cars that looked like they could fit in with that kind of destruction, they could take that kind of rough environment. We made some conscious decisions to remove the HUD from the corners of the screen, just so we could maximise all the effects that are happening on the screen. I think traditional racing games tend to have something in every corner, but we wanted to try and simplify that and minimise it so the player gets to see all the effects that are going on the screen, all the smoke, all the VFX, everything like that. The racing game is a rhythmic thing rather than a, a spectacular thing. We try and take that rhythmic, combine it with the spectacular and really, you know, produce something special.